Hello and welcome to Global Impact Week. Um, just as a starter, I should say, you can find us and share your thoughts and questions on social media with the Webit hashtag at all times. And to start off our discussion, I want to welcome Ernesto Chiora, um, Chief Innovability Officer at NL, a Bocconi graduate who started his own innovation consultancy before um, joining NL. Ernesto, thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. And would you like to start by saying a few words introducing yourself? Thank you very much for inviting me. Hello, everybody. I am a Chief Innovability Officer, this new title that we have invented to mix uh, innovation and sustainability. So I lead innovation and sustainability at global level. And I'm also a poet and a writer oh, okay. and a novelist. Um, <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, let me just get into the meat of things directly and ask you, um, what is your strategy for renewable energy at NL? Uh, we are going to consolidate our role as uh, one of the, the, the largest private renewable player at the global level. We are going to triple our renewable capacity by 2030, adding around 100 gigawatt of additional renewable capacity. Today, we have 49 gigawatt already installed. And uh, um, by 2030, we will have 145 gigawatt. And this will increase our global market share from the current 2.5% to over 4%. If we consider that uh, we will have just the 4% 4, uh, 4 of the global market share, you can imagine that we have not competitors. We have allies. From our point of view, all companies who want to really uh, um, uh, install renewables and lead the energy transition are allies. We don't see competitors, we need just allies as Jedis. If we, we can use the metaphor of Star Wars, the Jedis are those ones who want to really uh, power the world with renewables. The Siths are those ones, the companies, politicians and the other ones who don't want to power this world with renewables and they prefer fossil fuels and they prefer oil and gas instead of uh, bettering our environment. Our strategy will be aimed at reducing the cost of renewables as we have already done in the last five years. Thanks to the innovations that we have implemented, we have cut by, six, by 60% the cost of renewables. Our strategy will be aimed at uh, continuing the reduction, the, the, the lowering of, of, of the cost. And we want to hybridize renewables with batteries. And there will be many kinds of batteries, other storage solutions and hydrogen too. Okay, um, well, let me take your Jedi metaphor one step further and bring R2D2 into the picture and ask you, how can green growth and digital transformation go hand in hand in, in uh, fueling your sustainable recovery? We think that uh, we are not 100% digital and that there isn't any fully digital experience till we are alive because we are physical. We are physical beings. Everything that we do as a physical interaction, even if we elude ourselves that we could be digital. We will be fully digital when we will be dead. And, and uh, so I hope to be not fully digital for many years. We are at least digital. We have panels, photovoltaic panels on a side, wind poles on the other side, and hydroelectric plants on the other side, batteries, Mobile, uh, cars and cars for us are batteries with wheels. All these devices can be part of the new uh, uh, ecosystem of digitally and physical, digital energy powered with renewables. But to integrate them, to harmonize them, we need a lot of digital solutions. So to make this system come true, to stabilize this system and to uh, switch from a, an ideal picture of the future to a real picture of the future, we need digital. Digital solutions are the ways 
to harmonize all the different uh, producers of, 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 of energy with the different uh, users of energy. And to create this harmony, we need the digital solution. So not digital, no party, but don't elude ourselves. There isn't anything that we will do digitally. We will do it physically. So we need to hybridize the physical and the digital factories. And this is the real challenge because many companies are structured to manage digital solutions on a side, managing the physical activities and projects on the other side. This is uh, unfortunately not a good solution. We need to hybridize all of them because we need to be digital, having people able to create the harmony using digital technologies, but using also hardwares, hardware, because there isn't anything that is fully digital. Okay, I, I understand how it is important to integrate solutions into uh, the equation, um, but um, I want to think about, or I want to ask you about how we can go one step further. So rather than have sustainability as something that we do, make it a strategic, uh, an integral part uh, of what we are rather than what we do. So um, I want to ask you, how can sustainability be strategically integrated for business transformation? And, and as an aside to that, how the, the sustainable development goals are working to power innovation? I give, you an, I give you an example. When I joined Enel in 2014, we went in front of the financial investors for our uh, capital market day, markets day. And uh, we were saying that we wanted to cancel 5 billion to be invest of euros to be invested in, uh, in fossil fuel new plants, uh, switching all these investments into renewables. And they were disappointed because at that time, the cost of renewables was higher than the cost of uh, fossil fuel uh, uh, generation. And uh, they didn't believe that we could lower the cost of renewables. We answer to their questions saying that we want it to be sustainable because if we invested five, six years ago or seven years ago in new fossil fuel plants, uh, unfortunately, this could be just a waste of money because in five years we could, and we, we knew it, we could lower the cost of renewables. So that inv those investments would be wasted. In fact, in fact, other companies that invested in new fossil plan, uh, fossil uh, capacity, unfortunately, cannot start their new uh, plants because they are already out of the market. So we wanted to be sustainable, looking at the environmental uh, aspect of sustainability, but we wanted to be sustainable also looking at the business side of sustainability. There is not... Um, how could I say, an out, an out out. There is an at, at, either or. Because if we look at what is better for the communities, for the society, you will have a more sustainable solution that will provide you with a continuous source of, uh, uh, of profits. If you look at something that is useful in the short term, unfortunately, your uh, source of, uh, of profit will not be sustainable. So looking at the environment is fundamental. Looking at the society is very important because if you look at society and at environment, you are able to guarantee your shareholders with a continuous source of profits. And I want to share with you another concrete example of usage of the digital solutions to power the energy transition. Vehicle to grid. In 2016, we have implemented the first example at global level of commercial application of vehicle to grid. What is this? For us, a car, an electric car is a battery with wheels. So a battery can stabilize the system. So in Denmark, we have launched the first commercial example of usage of vehicle to grid because we ask uh, owners of electric cars to allow us to use their battery when they park the car. And their experience was very used, very simple. 
They had to park the car and to plug in the car, nothing else. They were plugging in the car and leaving the car. When they came back, they found a car with the recharge battery and they didn't pay anything for the energy. How could it happen? Because we were using their batteries when they didn't use the car to stabilize the grid. We could do it thanks to a digital platform. We have found a startup from, uh, from United States, Nuvi, and thanks to their support using their digital platform, we were powering the first at global level vehicle to grid business model. This is based on real assets, batteries, electric cars, but on the other side, it's enabled by a digital platform. So we found an harmony in such a situation, harmony with the environment, because we were powering and stabilizing the grids. On the other side, we found an harmony with the business plan because we, we were not investing in batteries. The customers, the users of electric cars were investing in the assets, the cars. We were just providing a platform that could be scaled up. And thanks to this platform, we were providing services that are very important for the grades. This is an example of another example of embedding sustainability into the business model and getting a, a, a plus from the business model being sustainable. It's a great example. And um, thank you for bringing it up. And, and let me just take the opportunity to remind the audience that you can weigh in and tell us how you feel about using your car as a battery to stabilize the system. You can uh, pick up the discussion on social media with a web hashtag um, at all times. And you bring in another uh, very important element that I want to ask you about. Um, how do you incorporate innovation and how you can bring in external knowledge um, to drive innovation, which is, I guess, something very close to you personally as well. To be honest with you, I think that if we don't innovate, we die. That is no chance to survive. That's why we have linked innovation with sustainability, creating this innovability concept. Innovation is the tool. Sustainability is the real aim. Every two hours, we change the whole skin of our lips. Every 24 days, we change the whole skin. Every four years, we change all the cells of our liver. Every 15 years, we change the 99% of our body cells, even cells of the brain, cells of the heart, and cells of the rest of the body. If we don't change in harmony with the external pressure and temperature, our body dies. And the same happens to companies. The business models are changing the technologies are changing. The requests from and the needs from the customers and the society are changing. And everything's changing around us, the products, services. If we don't change continuously, the whole company, the company dies. You can't elude uh, yourself thinking that just the technology department must innovate or that just the marketing department must innovate. The whole company must innovate. The HR, the audit, the, fi the finance department must innovate. So we have opened up, opened up the boundaries of our company to startups, research centers, independent innovators. And I can share with you some figures. In the last five years, 19,000 proposals analyzed from outside. More than 1,000 1, sorry, 1,000 POCs implemented. 400 POCs with success. 600 were failures. We need fa to fail. If we don't fail, we never succeed. We scaled up more than 200 projects. So from 19,000 proposals to 200 scale up. But it's normal. If you never try, you never succeed. When you try, you fail sometimes, sometimes you succeed. And when in some other cases, you can scale up your, your, your innovations. 200 projects scaled up, it's a magnificent a result. And so more or less every 100 proposal, we scale up one project. 
as Edison said, 1% is inspiration, 99% is perspiration. But this is very important. On $1 that we have invested, we have got more than $3.5 of incremental EBITDA, incremental margin. Okay. So considering all the costs, even also the cost of the failed projects, every $1, we get more than $3.5. So we measure everything and we manage everything thanks to a digital platform that we have literally invented, analyzing, and we have all this knowledge digitalized. If the company will fire me and the whole innovability people, every, all the knowledge will remain because everything is digitalized. The startups we have met, the big companies we, are, we were working with, the names of the projects, the people, the budgets, everything is in the system. Everything is clear. And I think that just few companies have such a structured open innovation ecosystem. Other figures, we have a, a community, openinnovability.com, where we launch uh, um, crowd, uh, crowdsourcing challenges. More than 8,000 proposals received more than 100 countries and more than 500,000 people involved in such communities, such community. This is, we are very proud of such community and of our network of startups, st uh, hubs of startups. We have hubs in Boston, San Francisco, Tel Aviv, uh, Mo Moscow, uh, Madrid, Santiago in Chile, uh, Rio in Brazil, and many other digital hubs where we look for the best startups and where we involve them and where they pitch us on what they can do for our innovation. Um, this is amazing numbers that you're describing. And I need to ask you, um, this takes a very particular kind of mindset at the top. Um, how do you um, align, how do you change the mentality of the people at the top? First of all, doing what we say, we are saying, uh, personally doing what I ask people to do. Uh, I give you an example. I always ask people to analyze every proposal that we get and providing people who send us uh, proposals with a clear explanation with a yes or not and the next steps. Um, it's an hard work because we have received more than 19,000 proposals. So it's hard job. But I do the same when people write to me through LinkedIn or to other, other, other communication uh, ways, uh, emails or other stuff. I personally do. And it happened, for example, that a disabled person wrote to me asking, why don't you use your infrastructures to recharge electric cars uh, to let me able to recharge my wheelchair. I would like to recharge my wheelchair. I have a, an infrastructure to recharge electric cars out of my office, but I cannot use it. Why don't you allow me? And uh, I personally answer, this is just an example. He wrote uh, through LinkedIn, the name of this person is Andrea De Palo. And uh, I switched this email to the colleagues of the electric mobility department, and they have invented, with an involving Andrea, the first worldwide plug-in to plug, to recharge, sorry, electric wheelchairs. And we are now selling such a device that with more or less $50 enables everyone to recharge its his or her electric wheelchair. Uh, in every uh, public infrastructure traditionally used to, re to, to, to recharge electric cars. I, I could provide you with many examples of when I was working this way and the other ones were looking at me and they understood that if I do it, they can do it. And obviously, I always quote this hashtag, no CEO, no party. The CEO is doing the same. Uh, the CEO is the first person that is in love with innovation, that is curious, that is open to evaluate ideas, that is open to change his mind. So uh, I think that our, from our point of view, 
giving the example and walking the talk are the right ways and being able to demonstrate that, that we create value, concrete value. We start from concrete challenges that comes from the business side. And we have innovation people in every business area. We have also innovation people in the financial department, in the finance department, in the audit, in the HR, because everything can be changed. And these people are part of the, these lines, business lines or functions, and they want to change the area in which they work because everything can be changed. And using people from outside, we can do it definitely better. Okay, um, well, we're pushing against time, uh, but thank you for that. That is a great example. Um, I, I love the, the wheelchair um, approach. Um, but let me just remind everyone you can weigh in on the discussion using the Webit hashtag on social media and uh, relate your own experiences in, in uh, respect to that uh, or anything else you want to weigh in on. Uh, so this is how you've been working so far, what you've achieved. Um, now, for my last question, just very briefly, because we're pushing against time, if I can just go forward and I, and I want to ask you, what is your vision for the coming decades? Uh, I think that uh, as uh, the poet Paul Valéry wrote, uh, the future is no longer what it once was. The future is definitely different from the past. Uh, I think that uh, in the energy sector, we are going to change the way we produce energy or the other ones are producing energy because we have already the majority of our energy produced with renewables. We are going to change the way people use energy. We are going the change. Uh, 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 we are going to change the way we use cars because we will be using electric cars and everything is changing. But what will not change is our uh, willingness to survive, is our desire to be in love, is our uh, passion and curiosity for the future, is our uh, need to respect ourselves and to respect the other ones. So I think that what it will not change is what is human. And uh, I think that uh, an ancient uh, Greek uh, philosopher uh, wrote that uh, panta rei, it's a, a Grecian panta expression, rei. panta rei, that is to say that everything flows, everything is change, changing. And he wrote it uh, more than 2000 years ago, more or less 2000. 600, 2,800, I don't remember very well, I'm sorry. But uh, it's incredible because nothing has changed in terms of looking at the future. Everything will change. But what will not change is what is human. And this is exactly the real aim of our innovation. Respecting people, powering people, protecting people, uh, enabling people, enriching people, and uh, letting people survive in respecting and protecting their rights. It's exactly the willingness, the desire that Heraclito, the famous philosopher, had more than 2,600 ago, and the same one we have today. Uh, I hope that I have, read, I have answered your question. You have answered my question very optimistically, and thank you for that uh, positive note. I think it's a good note to end on. Um, so thank you for taking the time to talk to us tonight, and uh, we'll uh, see you, I guess, again in, in one of our next conferences. Take care. Thank you.